Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Carrie Champion Show. My name is Maria Marino. I'm filling in for Carrie. Happy Friday. Here's the thing. At this point, it is disrespectful to pick anyone but the Aces to win a title. That's how good they are. Now, part of my reasoning was it's just hard to win two years in a row. It, it doesn't happen often. Um, it's been 20 years since the WNBA had a repeat champion. But if there's anyone that can do it, it's the Las Vegas Aces. She's the first MVP in franchise history for the Liberty. This is an original franchise in the WNBA that has never won a championship. So, I mean, she has the potential to be the biggest free agent signing in WNBA history. I'm gonna hold off on giving that designation quite yet because Candace Parker back in 2021 went to the Chicago Sky and immediately delivered a championship. Connecticut Sun got there. Tiffany Hayes got had 30 points. Uh, she had 11 in the first quarter and New York made the necessary defensive adjustments to withstand that and weather the storm. And Stewie, although she had uh, trouble shooting from the floor again, she did play like an MVP because she realized that she still had to find other ways to impact the game. She had five blocks, she had 11 boards. And they were really the ones that struggled on the defensive end. The Aces guards were just beating them off the dribble every time and it was discouraging them then on offense. Courtney Vandersloot was getting a lot of open looks and she needs to shoot with confidence and not hesitate. And then Sabrina, we know how good she is shooting from deep. She's got to get looks, and, yeah. and her teammates need to find ways to get her open. I, I was watching the game. I didn't see one open opportunity she had. These absences are hugely significant for the Aces, especially Chelsea Gray. I mean, she's their point guard. She's their leader on both ends. She averages 36 minutes in the postseason. So it, it's going to be nearly impossible to replace her. And then Kia Stokes is a starter. She's also underrated. You're talking about a team that before tonight was playing usually a six person rotation. So now you're taking two of those key players out. And I think the the challenge is that you're going to have players for the aces that are going to be put in situations they're not really used to, but they are very well coached. And so I think they're going to be up for the fight. Sabrina, you guys cut the lead to three early in the fourth quarter. Why do you ultimately think you couldn't pull it out? Yeah, I mean, they're obviously um, a veteran team. They've been in this position. John Qual, why was this the right time in your career to make a change? Well, I want to know what about the Liberty caught your eye before you even knew John Quell and Sloot were coming? When the Pelicans had a head coaching vacancy, your name was in the conversation. And while you do what you do, no matter the role, what does it say about the state of the game that qualified women are being strongly considered for these leadership positions? Yeah. You, I think you just answered it, qualified. Sue Bird's resume speaks for itself. She is the quintessential point guard. She's the WNBA's all-time leader in assists. She's played in the pros in three different decades. But more than any of that, she's just a great person. I think she's been an excellent ambassador of the game, and she's understood the power she holds in the growth of women's basketball. She's just incredible. Thank you, Sue.